how to actually complete pathology in the next three months start by june the amount of stress what you'll have and the amount of output what you expect might not match there's no grace marks in mcqs right if you take let's take an example of a lung not everything is required in lung pathology heart we don't want you to read tetralogy of fallot asd vsd everything here i understood everything properly but now i am at juncture where i have to give my best output and get the reward for what i have worked hello guys welcome back to pw media duty channel this is dr ranjit and here in this video we are going to discuss how to actually complete pathology in the next 3 months for your second prof exam and not just to pass to excel to get a distinction or honors or whatever you deserve the mindset is very very important if you keep goal as the ppp it's not enough right we have to aim for these stars and let this time get to these stars not just get to the moon if you first time here click on the subscribe button let's learn more about pathology and medicine together let's dive in straight into the video i am sure at this point of juncture in your second prof your second intern is over and most of the colleges must have given the time for the prelims or the send offs right you must be wondering what to do your seniors would have you must have asked questions to your seniors sir i have been reading robin still now can i revise robin's possible unanimously the answer would have been no not possible then you'll be demotivated so what do i do i had volumes of book read i understood everything properly but now i am at juncture where i have to give my best output and get the reward for what i have worked is it possible to do and i am here to say it is possible to do and we'll definitely do it and if you've not started so early let's start a little bit later and if you're stuck here what to do in the next 3 months this is the video for you So now let's see. Most of you college the centers would have been around June third week. So we are going to focus on that, and then we obviously look at the university exam when the timetable comes. How to excel that as well, right? So here I am going to primarily divide into two uh, parts in this video. One is to take care of the theory, other is to take care of the practical, and we'll soon see is it wise to do it separately or is it wise to do together, right? So June third is the centers. Now we are sitting in the month of May, right? you might be saying that let me complete the portion first still the college is having something and my interns also might be coming up the third one so let's complete that first then let's start the revision but i would say slightly differ here put the extra work burn the midnight oil start to revise slowly and steadily now itself don't wait for the june month don't wait for the portion to be completed let's say 1 hour right 1 hour per day to revise is more than enough but if you look at that 1 hour from today next 30 days is 30 hours of revision that's worthwhile completing half of pathology you won't understand the effect of compounding unless and until you do it but if you start by june the amount of stress what you'll have and the amount of output what you expect might not match start early always be in the race and be consistent and make sure we get out of distinction or honor right so now i would want you to start at least this if possible if you have done decently till now maybe an extra half an hour So what do I do in this time, right? So simple, we have our theory. General path is one thing. Hemat, I put a star because most of you like hematology, and just now internals got over, right? So the confidence level of hematology will be more. Let's talk about after one month, it will automatically come down to normal. Then now we are in the problem of systemic pathology, where it looks huge, it looks voluminous. The content in Robbins or any textbook is equal to general path and hematology for systemic pathology alone. is it required for me to revise every, read everything and revise everything the answer is a straight out no you have a blessing in disguise that's your cbme so cbme is actually structured everything if you look at the cbme curriculum if you take let's take an example of a lung not everything is required in lung pathology heart we don't want you to read tetralogy of fallot asd vsd everything here that will be read in pediatrics So the purpose of CBME curriculum is tailor made so that you have to read these 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 things from pathology for sure and rest of it you will definitely learn in the course of the next 3 years of medicine right so please stick to the curriculum stick to robins any book but robins is definitely the best but stick to the curriculum if you want to read robins from cover to cover in systemic pathology the time is not adequate time is not enough now what do i do i have three big volumes what do i take care of how do i go over it our goal for this video is to is excel your prof exams that's the goal here right so prof exam has three things laq short answers two marks or five marks based on university and mcqs mcqs i'll be very confident and i'm 100% sure that if you're an sha bar student and if you're doing it regularly the dpps that should be more than enough 
every lecture has a DPP. In addition to that, your QBank. In addition to that, your monthly exams. So we made sure this part has been taken care of it from the start. So 20 marks in university exam is sorted. If you want to double down, please look at the mistakes of the DPP. Please look at the mistakes of the QBank. If you want, attempt a little bit more questions. That should be enough. Because this is hit or miss. There's no grace marks in MCQs, right? So make sure you get this hit. Maybe if not 20, at least let's do 15 plus in the university exam. That should be a goal here, right? That's one done. LAQs. The biggest thing in LAQs, how you approach a question. That's what Farre series is for. I'll talk about Farre at the end of the video as well to take care of most of the controversy around Farre, right? So how to arrive at the diagnosis? We'll teach you exactly by using your, your past papers. We'll take from the university your past papers. We'll solve everything line by line structure and to give a diagnosis or a differential diagnosis and then we'll have a structure made for both short answer and long answer that's what for is for we'll give an exact structure of what to write so this is the volume of content i've read i have to streamline i have to make it narrow and i have to make it presentable right he'll take care of that leave that to us your focus should be how you have to read it and the most important thing once you're done with theory this guy will come and sit most of the seniors and most of the general dictum is that Let's complete the theory first. Let's focus on the theory for prelims. Practicals, general ideas. I'll have a weak gap between theory and practicals. Let me do that time. That's the biggest mistake. Please don't do that. Practicals in pathology, you have gross, right? You have slides. You know the number by default, right? And you have instruments and techniques, right? Most of them are a part of theory. It's intertwined with theory. You are, we are reading GIT. We read about benign gastric ulcer, malignant gastric ulcer. That's a gross specimen. Obviously, right? Inflammatory bowel disease might be a gross specimen. Colonic cancer, a gross specimen. Slides. We did, do read about lots of things. Zignet ring cells, slides. So, the theory and practicals with respect to pathology are intertwined. It's not separate. So, don't read it separately. The next question comes, so then how do I do it? How do I make it an integrated learning? That's what I'm going to talk about. A gateway to success. Why success? A gateway to excellence. I told you to read one and a half hours per day. Whatever subject you are. Before starting a chapter, I want you to spend minimum 20-30 minutes. It will not take more than that. Sometimes 10 minutes is enough for you. Let's keep 10 minutes as a target. 10 minutes, don't do anything else. Prepare the gateway to excellence. What do I mean by that is, put a table. Take a paper. If you're a software uh, geek, do it in the Excel sheet or Word file. Or if you're a pen and paper guy, do it in a, take a paper. Let's take cell injury for an example. I want you to divide into two columns here. One for theory, one for practicals. And here are the topics. Fine. Let's assume I'm just writing necrosis. Necrosis. I want you to just go through the past papers of your university exams. Right, okay, types of necrosis, a five mark. Entire necrosis, an essay. Difference between necrosis apodosis, a two mark or three mark. Write that down in theory. So this will definitely be useful for me. At the same time, make sure you write the practical points also here. So what do I mean by that is, you must definitely have a slide of caseous necrosis, right? You might have a gross specimen of TB lymph node. You can write that TB lymph node here, TB lung here, or you can put in chronic inflammation, whatever it is. But if you if you want to make it even more better, write the number of the slide also, 1182. You have some markdown right in the photographs. That is for caseous necrosis. So now by preparing this, I know when I'm reading necrosis, I know what to read in theory. At the same time, I'm simultaneously getting prepared for practical. This is very, very, very important. It will take hardly 10 minutes for a chapter. 10 minutes, create a gateway to excellence and follow that, you will reach excellence. Like I said, if you're a software person or if you're like a little bit lazy to go and write with a pen and paper, take Robbins, take any chapter. Let's go to a chapter. GIT, copy paste, that's all. We know that, we know how to do it, right? Like IBD, an essay question. Definitely an essay question. Difference between Crohn's and Alcedo can be an essay question. It's a LAQ, right? Write that. You must have had samples also there. Let's say FAP or colon cancer, an essay question. Let's say gastric adenocosma, an essay question, right? Copy it from that, put in the form of a table. Peptic ulcer disease it, uh, might be a short answer. 
also there's a possibility of a specimen there write that so make the gateway to excellence 15 papers that's enough 15 to 16 papers is what the chapters what you're going to read for a final exam make sure you write that and make sure you maintain that sheets and when you revise after your prelims this is going to make your life much 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 easier that's as simple as that so once you're done with that like i said in the start how are we going to help you in the form of with the help of medal we will have definitely your furry series so the goal of furry has been taken lightly right generally this what students say is furry is something if i don't read before it's a for me something a cheat code to pass no it is not it's a cheat code for excellence whether you studied before or you started a little bit later what happens is your existing knowledge base is this much conceptual understanding mcqs whatever it is it's huge should i write all this in an exam the answer is a definite no will i get good marks if i write everything answer is not no parre is to help you to channelize this energy and your knowledge of yours into a sheet of paper that's the goal of furay furay is not a cheat code furay is to make sure this knowledge of yours it's humongous it's voluminous it's just like an ocean and to make it channelize so that you can get a good mark most of you might be worrying sir my handwriting is not good my presentation is not good look at this not good at all my handwriting is also not good but if i write okay these are the data points this is why I came to my diagnosis in an LAQ. It will catch the eye of the examiner. Etiology, one heading. Pathogenesis, one heading. Gross, one heading. Microscopy, one heading. Markers, one heading for cancer. Prognostic features, one heading. It will catch the eye of the examiner. It need not be a beautiful handwriting. It need to be a presentable, legible handwriting. That's enough for me. And that's the goal of our right? To make sure the superb conceptual understanding of yours translates to an exam paper so that you will be rewarded beautifully in your second prof exam. If you still have any more queries on how to crack the exam, put in the comment section and let's make sure this year every single person who's passing the second year exam will pass it superbly with an amazing knowledge and satisfaction of reading pathology and medicine. See you soon. Till then, bye bye from Dr. Anjit. Bye bye.